Hello, and welcome to this video tutorial where we will create the project schedule that you are seeing on your screen. We will use the JavaScript schedule library and its resource view. We can create new tasks by selecting cells and clicking on them. In the dialog that shows, we can put text that will show in the task and select the people who will be responsible for this task. We can group the view by contacts and see which task is scheduled when and assigned to who. We start by creating a folder where we place the mindfusion.scheduling.js file and the IntelliSense code completion file. We have a text file where we store the license key and a folder with the predefined schedule themes. All those files are found in the downloadable archive, which you can get from the JS Scheduler webpage on MindFusion's website. Now, we open the directory with the open website command of Visual Studio. Then, we need to add two files to our project. One is a web page that we call Project Schedule. The other has the same name but is a JavaScript file, the code behind file where we will create and customize our resource view. We edit the title of our web page and then add a reference to the Schedule CSS theme that we plan to use. This is the Light theme, which is located in the Light.css file in the Themes folder, and we add a reference to it. At the bottom of our web page, right before the closing body tag, we add references to two JavaScript files, MindFusion Scheduling, which is the schedule library, and Project Schedule, the code behind file. The timetable renders itself into a div element. We add one to our web page and give it an ID. That is very important. We are ready to start writing the code for the project scheduler. We switch to the JavaScript file and add a reference to the IntelliSense file and a mapping to the MindFusion scheduling namespace. Then, we create a new instance of the calendar class and set its current view property to resource view. We set the theme property to light, which is the same as the name of the CSS stylesheet file we referenced in the web page. We need to call the render method in order to see the calendar on screen. Now if we run the application in a browser, we should be able to see the schedule. It shows just the timeline because we haven't added any resources, tasks, or contacts to it. Let's do it! Each task is an instance of the task class. We set its subject and add it to the tasks collection of the calendar schedule. The divider between the task groups is a task with an empty subject. In order to see items to the left of the resource view grid, we need to group by them. We can group by tasks, locations, or contacts. In our case, we want as a start to see the tasks, so we group by task. We do this by adding the tasks to the tasks property of the calendar, not to the schedule, as we did when we created them. Then, we set the group type property to group by task. If we refresh the page, you can see now the tasks to the left. The default place is too small for them, and we need to expand it. This is done through CSS. We inspect the CSS styling for the left row of tasks and copy the names of the CSS styles that set their appearance. Then we inspect the styling of the headers. We want to have more space for the left row of elements. We will have to push the timelines as well.
So back to the HTML file. We edit the styles that set the appearance of the elements of interest. We add a left margin to the timeline and increase the width of the header group. Some of the CSS styles are specific to the theme, and we need to add its name to the style name. If we refresh the page, we can see that we now have enough space for the task, but we have to customize how the timeline looks. This is done in JavaScript and through the properties of the Resource View Settings field. Let us look in the API documentation, the members of the Resource View Settings class. We see it has Timelines property for the number of timelines to show. By default, they are three, top, middle, and bottom. Each one is customized through its property, which is of type Timeline Settings. This class has a format property that sets how the data time is rendered and a unit property. The unit property is one of the members of the time unit enumeration and tells the control, which is the unit of time that is used by this timeline. Now let's add the required settings to the JavaScript file. We set the number of visible cells in the resource view to 30 and the timelines to 3. Then, in the bottom timeline, we want the unit to be day and the unit count to be 1. That means the timeline will render 30 cells, one for each day. The middle timeline is again with time unit day, but the unit count is 5. This means that each interval of this timeline will span 5 days, and its label will render the shortened version of the weekday together with the date of the month with leading zeros. The top timeline is measured in weeks, and we want each cell to span two weeks. It will render the full name of the month of the first cell in this interval. If we refresh the page, we can see that the timelines look better now. Let's add the rest of the project milestones now. We add the rest of the tasks to the Schedule Tasks collection. Here they are. If we create a task, you can see that we have no contacts to choose from. For example, we cannot associate any employees with this task. That's because we haven't added any contacts yet. Let's add some. The employees are instances of the contact class. It has fields for first name, last name, and we add it to the contacts collection of the schedule. Now, if we create a task, we can see in the detailed form for appointment creation a list with the available contacts. They are associated with the task. Having contacts is useful because we can group by them and change the tasks that now render to the left with a list of the employees. This way, what tasks are assigned to an employee? We'll do that with two buttons above the schedule. One will group the schedule by tasks, the other by contacts. In the web page, we add the code for two buttons. The both have the same method for an event handler of the clicked event, group. The group method takes as an argument the numeric value that corresponds to the desired grouping option in the group by enumeration. In the group method, we need to clear the tasks and contacts collection of the calendar. We check which type of grouping is set, and we add anew the contacts or the tasks to the respective fields of the calendar. Finally, we set the group by property to the user chosen value. If we refresh the web page, we will see the buttons. Pressing each of them groups the schedule by tasks or by employees. Let's test how it works. We create a task and assign three employees to it. Here it is. 
we can see that the task is recorded for those employees. Another task that is assigned to four people. Here it is. We can edit the subject of the tasks and edit the duration of the task by drag in both views. With that, we are ready building this project schedule. The final version of the sample includes some finishing CSS styling, which you can see in the code if you download the project. It is listed as a link in the video description. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your interest in MindFusion developer tools.